Dear students, today we will start our lecture on history of computing. And in this presentation, we will learn about the early generation computers and we will reach towards smartphones. And you can see on your screen that we, I have mentioned the book which we are following and the page number of the books here. So in the next lectures, I will only be mentioning the page numbers of the same book, which is your textbook. So first of all, we should be very clear that computer was made not only by one or two scientists of the world. So it has progressed over the years, or you can say over the half century, and many people have contributed to develop the today's computer. So there were two types of people in the history. One, those who made experiment and they were successful and upcoming people learn from their experiments and stand on the shoulders of them and build their own computer devices. And there were second type of people who remained unsuccessful, but the upcoming people understood the failure stories and those also help them to understand what they should not build for future. So if we go into the history, one of the early computer is found, which is known as Abacus. And that has roots in ancient China, Greek and Roman civilization. And this is the picture of Abacus that is used to store data. So it has a small bids for example this one this is called one bid and each bid is representing a number so the lower bids are representing one to five and upper bids are representing five so if you want to represent three so you need to move these three bids upward so this was one of the early concept of storing data. Then there was another technology known as technology of gears and different people worked in this technology. For example, Pascal from France, Leibniz from Germany and Babbage from England. And in this technology, you can see that these are the gears and each gear is storing some information and then after processing, it is giving the output of whatever the result was for your computation. And Pascal and Leibniz output in gear. However, the Babbage was able to produce the output on paper. So that was in the form of punch cards. So here you can see the punch card. And here you can see small holes are available. And each hole or combination of holes is representing some data. For example, if you want to represent one, you might have three holes and then three empty spaces that might represent only a digit one. But this technology was able that enabled the at that time of the technology that it was possible to understand and take input of algorithm from outside the device. However, the punch card developed by Babbage, it was possible to take input of an algorithm from outside the device. However, such technologies were not produced cost effectively at that time. So they became obsolete. Obsolete mean it becomes um, old. So at that time, in the meantime, there were some other efforts like Sipsits from Bell Labs and there was another effort at Harvard. So they made electromechanical devices. So they controlled relays electromechanically. And this is one of the computer of early ages, which is known as electronic numerical integrator and calculator. And you can see that this is a huge computer having lot of vacuum tubes and it only produce 
very small kind of calculations. So even your smartphone nowadays is even smarter than these kind of large computers. And do you know that this computer occupied 1800 square feet at that time? So which is equivalent to around about 10 Marla's house. So this computer can only be stored in such a large location. And then it has 20,000 vacuum tubes, 1500 relays, 10,000 capacitors, 70,000 registers, 200 kilowatt electricity it was taking and it was weighed over 30 tons and it cost Pakistani rupees at that time 62.5 million. So it was not possible to purchase such a computer by individuals. And then there was, after that there was a rapid development and advancement in the form of transistor. So transistor really shrink the size of this computer by replacing vacuum tubes. And with this transistor, three physicists got their Nobel Prize. And then there was, there was another technology known as integrated circuit, which further reduced the size of computer by replacing transistors. And another uh, physicist got Nobel Prize to make this integrated circuits. And they reduce the size and they enhance the power. And it is saying that the processing power is doubling in every two years since then, even by today. And then there were some efforts to make desktop computers. For example, you know Steve Jobs, which we were discussing in the last presentations. So he was doing as a hobby to develop a desktop computer and he developed. And there were some other efforts as well, but those efforts were not realized by the business community. And then IBM made a really very good first computer known as personal computer in 1981, which was widely accepted. And when the computers are available, then there was the next task to make them connected in the form of networks and in the form of web. And then there were many researchers led by Tim Berners-Lee, who developed the web. And now we have reached to the smartphones. And there are people who are saying that smartphones have really made revolutionary changes to the lives of people rather than the desktop computers. So if we summarize our lecture, we have started from Abacus and we have gone through gear technology and then vacuum tubes, transistors and then integrated circuits and we have reached to smartphones. So thank you very much.